that's a triple play. New episodes of Kenway. Open your mind at the first gate. Press play, no need to debate. AOA, check me out. Look, clock these you gon' catch me in the hot seat. Pull up in the dark, how we follow the light. Anime like life, married to my wife. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages? Welcome back to the AOA show. I'm your host, as always, Ian, along with the boy Isaiah. Oh, hi, oh. And today we're talking Jujutsu Kaisen episode 17. This one was fan freaking tastic. Like, really, all of these have been. I really just love this anime. But anyway, we're here to break down what we liked, what we didn't like, where we think this show is going, predictions, theories, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure you guys are liking this video so we know that you enjoy it. If you are new here, make sure you guys are subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any future discussions and or videos make sure you guys are sharing with your friends because the more the merrier it's not just isaiah and myself the conversation starts with us but it certainly doesn't end there it's now up to you the community at large and speaking of which that means comment your thoughts down below what did you think of our discussion what did you think of this episode in particular let us know all those thoughts down there and if you want to catch our live reaction you could do that on our aoa reacts channel the link will be in the description down below where we have all of our live reactions, so you definitely want to sub to that channel as well. Comment of the day! Isaiah, take it away. What do we got? All right, so this episode's comment is from User Unknown. The uh, question was, what was the name of Gojo's uh, technique? Uh, the answer is Infinite Void. His comment says, Anyways, I'm the only one who thought Toto was basically telling Yuji to use the Force when he tapped into Curse Energy around him. Also, I don't know if you guys caught this as well. The main thing that makes Panda special is his three cores and his ability to shift his cores within his body. As a cursed doll, it is, uh, it is, it, as a cursed doll is as long as he, as long as he has working, uh, working core powering his Panda body is viably, is virtually unstoppable. Um, yeah, I, I actually definitely thought the whole, like the Toto, uh, Yuji speech at the beginning definitely harkened to like this Star Wars like you just gotta like feel it you know um, so that was cool and yeah Panda w one of you know many things that make that man uh, incredible is his ability that like he's got the three person or you know personalities cores in him um, that he can like move them around you know what I mean I, I can't think of what it is right now but there's something that I've seen in like a video game or something that like has that ability where it can like move its organs or something in its body um, which is a pretty dope ability to have. Mm. But anyway, uh, this one really highlighted some of the ladies, some of the strong ladies in this show. And man, I love them. Um, fantastic. Nobara is like really climbing up there. Maki is just a straight up badass. We get some uh, backdrop into people like Mai and, and uh, Miwa is just kind of taken aback by everything that's going down. Uh, Momo as well. And uh, you see kind of some of the strong relationships and bonds some of these characters have uh, made with each other, especially people that have been to the school for a couple of years, if they're second year, third years, et cetera, when they come in up in the same class. And, you know, they, they look out for each other, even when it's not them fighting on the line, if that makes sense, right? We get a lot of uh, dialogue between Momo and Nobara, where Momo is kind of defending Mai, saying, listen, like, you don't understand what it's like to be from this family, et cetera have a lot of stuff going down, but I am curious to hear your initial impressions impressions on the episode, Isaiah, because you said that this might be one of your favorites, if not your favorite episode in this entire series so far. I want to know why. Um, so yeah, I, off the bat, loved this episode. Um, I, cause I, the thing was, I was nervous that this episode was going to be like, oh, like, let's give the girls of the group an episode, but like, they're going to like fight around and be like, oh, like that it was just going to be very fake and like showy or their, like, side of the team, and that, like, because this is a shonen anime through and through, and I don't have a lot of experience with shonen anime that are pretty diverse and uh, refreshing in terms of, like, exploring and giving every character, regardless of their, who they are or what they are, uh, a chance to shine and, like, a legit character representation. So I was nervous going into, they were just going to do the same thing, um, but just coded under beautiful animation, which is present, but we do also get amazing characters from all of the the women that we see in this uh, episode which was straight fantastic my nabora like everybody was amazing like uh, you know they have their character flaws and 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 uh personalities and quirks or not but like just just their characters all their characters are great and uh, fantastic first off their abilities even kasumi's with like the sword thing where it's like she creates a barrier and then, like cool. 
her body, like, instinct takes over. Anything that comes in, she can just, like, attack. Mm-hmm. Pretty dope. Um, but, like, Nobara and Maki are the clear, you know, at least in my mind, uh, the clear standouts here in terms that, like, they're not just incredibly, incredibly capable uh, fighters and incredibly badass, but, like, their ideologies. And, like, it's tough because I almost, like... While Kasumi, well, not so much Kasumi, because I think I think Kasumi's kind of like Loki in her own boat here, in terms of the viewpoints of like that are really going on. Because really, it's like Nobara and Maki are in one side of this camp, and then Momo and um, uh, Mai are in another camp, and like Kasumi is supporting them, like obviously, like for being on their team. But I don't feel like her viewpoints align with the way they think, because there's this clear uh, clash between like. This world doesn't view us women as equals. It doesn't view us as the same level of care when it comes to being a jujitsu sorcerer or even being a person. And like, you know, in some other cases, if you can't even be a jujitsu sorcerer, you're not even a human to them. You're not even a person, which is absolutely crazy in my mind because it's like, well, what about all the niggas who live in the world that can't, that aren't jujitsu What, they're not humans? Like, what... Logic is flawed. Out I the think gate. she meant for her clan, that clan specifically. No, no, but that's my point. Like yeah, the yeah, whole, you're not yeah, telling yeah. me that they, every single person in that clan, like was like it, oh, that just oh. doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, flaw like you know, stupid old shit number one. But this clear uh, clash between like this world has beaten me down and has oppressed the way I should think about myself so many times that it might just be better to fall like you know roll with the punches and fall in line and submit to that way of thinking so i don't have to take these beatings anymore versus the nobara and maki side of things where it's like if somebody hits you and tells you that like you can't be x y or z that's why you need that's that is the only reason why you should get up and hit them back twice as hard and tell them no i can't like so you know this is this clear which you know has obviously caused you know, a stir between the the sisterhood relationship of Maki and Mai, but it's clearly you know on, on a much broader scale the sort of ideology I, ideological thing that like Nobara and uh, Momo are going back and forth with a little bit, where she's you know she's giving her the whole spiel like women are are aren't viewed are only viewed as valuable if they're pretty, and even then it's like you know whatever. Um, and you know Nobara uh, like it, it it was it was just cool. It was really cool to see those ideologies presented and not like used as like a like a, you know, like, like just a, as a nice coat of paint to make these characters like, oh, they said something like cool and relatable. Um, but yeah, and I just loved it. And like, again, to top it off, like I said, at the beginning of the episode, I was worried that if this episode was going to be just, you know, shallow surface level shit with beautiful animation, it was not that. And also there was beautiful animation on top of it because every single fight in this episode was like, I don't know who these people are. I, I feel like I got to like, I got to like start saying their names, like the, the animators and the, and the people who work on the show. Cause like, it's just, it, cause it, it, this wasn't the first episode. Like it's been present and it's been consistent for a while, but like this episode, like I didn't just any of like, I don't even know. I mean, cause like Nobara, uh, tons of her, like, you know, choreograph and like so her movements were beautifully animated, but like, I feel like Maki specifically. Maki got a fucking glow up this episode. Like every shot of this woman in move in motion was beautiful. Was literally like jaw dropping, and just the way like it perfectly highlighted again. I mentioned this in the reaction, but like you know Maki's you know character or type or character build fits perfectly with with the personality that she exudes because she can't use Jujutsu Sorcerer in like the traditional way. Right. Again, to harken back to another shonen that I know, um, Naruto, uh, <laughs> Whoa. Rock Lee. It's like, yeah. you know what I mean? So you like these characters who can't fight the typical way or the traditional way that like most characters do combat in your world are always often going to be like looked down upon or, or seen as lesser than. But again, to someone like Mai, who is in the same predicament, that was a reason to like subside and submit to, to stave off the, you know, those eyes. And like she says in the episode to live a normal life, right? Do a couple chores and let's just be happy with ourselves. And Maki's like, no, it's not about us. We need to do better for other people, for the future generation. If we do right, if we become the leaders and we fix this shit here and now, future generations don't have to worry about that. Other girls don't have to grow up the way we're growing up and, and live with the same shit we're living with because we can stop that shit. We can, but we're going to have to fight and work three times as hard to do that. But like, that's a fight that I'm willing to, to get involved in. And so like, you know, it just makes sense that she's this incredibly strong, quick and fast, like, you know, 
uh, hand to hand fighter. I mean, she's slicing trees in half. She's fucking kicking and punching people around. It, it was just absolutely. I this was probably one of my favorite episodes. Mm. Yeah, no, I mirror a lot of the points. Um, it just goes down to good writing, <laughs> for the most part. You know what I mean? Like female or not, they just they ri- they wrote the characters well. You know, the dialogue, the conversations that they had, and they did they really did justice to it. Um, which is another reason why I think this show, as a shonen, not gonna lie, like I, you know, I'll really give my expounded thoughts once the season wraps up. But this might be one of the one of the big shonens for me personally. Um, just do with its writing and and just these moral dilemmas and these these ideologies and f- philosophical arguments within the confines of fighting and. Every episode is, is is generally fire from start to finish. I think it was fantastic, and, and this was just another good one because it was these characters um, really had a lot to show, and I think they executed on it very well. I, I really liked. Um, I love. I mean, I, Maki was incredible, but you know, you obviously uh, stated the reasons that you did um, for her. Excuse me, but uh, I really love Nobara's scene personally in this episode um, when she fights Momo just because seeing how much of a badass this chick is, it was just so awesome. She's like country rough and tough, but like knows who she is and what she's about. And she's like, it doesn't matter about you thrusting some sort of societal thing on my shoulders, or you think that it's like, I'm going to bend or, or give you more sympathy because of this, that, and the third, I am me. And regardless of what that means, I like to do what I like to do for me. I'm not paying, like, I'm not paying attention to whatever, whatever other shit. I'm not giving myself a free pass on anything else. And I'm not giving you a free pass on anything else either for that. Just because you feel like you've been more wrong by whether it's society or whatever, which kind of mirrors to the previous episode when Panda tells Mecca, where he's like, just because you've been wronged or just because you have, uh, you know, hardships doesn't make you more justified, right? In, in your reasonings. And I found a lot of parallels to that in that care in those characters as well, which makes sense why Nobara and gang, you know, are on the, uh, on the, on the same team here. They, their, their ideology seem to kind of mesh together pretty well. Um, I just love that line where she just stabs the doll and she says, you know, I am, um, Nobara, uh, Kusaki, like, you know, that's me. That's who I am. I, I loved her in this episode in particular. I thought she was fantastic. Um, but yeah, and, and seeing, unfortunately, you know, the the struggle between Mai and Maki, but hopefully Mai can have kind of a come around because I think that's the, the big thing here is that, you know, it's it's simple, not not simple, but it's it's an alluring option sometimes in in spite of overwhelming talent exuded by others or you know, if your environment is kind of being a, having a heavy hand over what it is that you do. Um, to just be like, listen, all, all I got to do is, is just kind of play by the rules here and I could just kind of skirt through, skirt through life. But, um, you know, it's, that doesn't necessarily make it the right decision, right? It just makes it the easier decision in that. Right. And Maki says, she's like, listen, if I had stayed there and done that, I couldn't have lived with myself. I would have, I would have hated myself for that because I knew I'm capable of that much more of it. And you know, that that's what it's going to be. I'm going to fight for it. So, you know, you, you could you could come up with me or, or, or you could not, but I think she has a feeling she's going to come up with her. So I don't know. That's going to be some interesting stuff going forward, honestly. Um, also, the female that we got in the teacher's lounge, <laughs> I want to call it talking to Gojo, was a pretty interesting chick. Um, I don't know what her deal is uh, besides that she's kind of money, mung- money hungry, um, but she's not hiding anything about it. So I thought that was interesting and where she's going in the future um, if she does have any sort of role. But that's really all my thoughts on the episode as a whole, because that's kind of what it enveloped. I'm curious to see next episode. We got the preview um, where we got uh, ca- Camo, but he opens his eye now, so that'll be interesting, the guy with his eyes shut and kind of explaining how to defend against, you know, the uh, the the Toge's sound waves, essentially, how he talks you out of existence or whatever he does. But anyway, those are my thoughts. I don't know if you had anything to add. But. Um, well, just a little side note, it, it was cool to see um, a little bit more about how the actual game that they're supposed to be like partaking in take our works. Um, you know, so we saw that like they have the charms on the wall there where the, uh, the professors are all like watching from, um, which is totally weird that there's like, I guess legit cameras in birds eyes. 
because there was like that crow looking at the fight and that's how they were seeing it, but they're watching it on monitors and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> is, there, is that bird like hooked up with an actual camera? Whatever. Um, and, and, you know, and so then those charms are also on the subsequent uh, cursed spirits and so they have all the different people or the, the two different teams taking them out and depending on which team does it, it burns like a different color. But it said, I if, and I could be uh, mis- so, you know, miss uh, remembering this. Um, but it also said that if, so if the first year team takes out a cursed spirit, the charms burn red. If yeah. the second team or second year team takes one out, they burn blue. But if a cursed spirit is eliminated by like an outside source, it also burns red. So burning red does not technically always indicate that the, that first year team got a point, which is just an interesting note. Cause I feel like, again, they're bringing it up, which means it's probably gonna happen at some point. Um, so, uh, so that was definitely interesting. And, and yeah, I am definitely curious to see what, um, you know, what kind of stuff, uh, Megumi gets into. Cause it looks like he's going to be like, you know, the next fight is going to be between him and, uh, Notoroshi, Notoroshi, um, you know, next episode. And I'm like, I'm curious because I wonder if this episode is going to be like Megumi's episode, you know, where we learn more about that thing that Sukuna like originally sort of like, you know key down and like saw in him um if that's gonna like awaken or if he's even gonna learn more about it maybe it's just like a new way of using techniques i don't know but that will you know will definitely be interesting and yeah maybe i, I i'm hoping it, it's interesting that they out the gate already have a counter like in place for someone like toge because a that cues you into like he's that much of a problem and that like you know obviously like her speech is clearly like that powerful of a technique but i'm like at some point, we got to see him cut loose, right? Like, we got to see him start speaking some words and just knocking dudes down. So I wonder, you know, uh, Momo, and they bring it up, like, again, you know, it, I'm glad it was it was mentioned. Momo is saying, um, basically, because they know he has this ability, but, like, don't know where he is or, or, or when he's going to use it, they, like, basically always have to constantly be on guard and have to have their ears uh, protected with cursed energy but like doing it's you know again it's, it's the same thing where it's like if they're constantly funneling cursed energy on their ears to protect it they're like always kind of playing this this battle of like uh multitasking and like you know micromanaging you know that with whatever else or whoever else they're fighting so i wonder if that's going to come into play like one of them gets worn out or distracted and then you know uh toge comes in with the stop or whatever and just <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, this episode was dope. Like I said, I, I really love this episode because it was just, it was more than I was expecting, at least from a shonen anime. Um, and I, like you said, there definitely are, seem to be themes where it's like the, all the different, uh, y um, like years of students, so like first year, second years, uh, like there's clearly like a very obvious like familial bond almost between them where it's like the second years really do seem to like fuck with the other second years and like really do work well with each other and like do speak i mean like you know it, it, i'd be hard pressed to think momo's not under the same kind of restrictions obviously to a different extent because she's not from uh the zenin clan which was like they said like a high uh you know a high listed clan um but it, like again it, it, it's just it was interesting to see how much momo is willing to stick up for uh my and be like no you don't get it like you don't understand what she's been through and then like this whole thing of nobara and maki because they're in the same or um Actually, no, I'm sorry. They're not. They're different. But, like, there's this, there's this, I don't know. I, I've i seen anime where it's, like, the students are, like, all low-key kind of about themselves and for themselves. So, it's, like, in, it's it's nice, I guess, to see, like, it's, like, now nah, we, we, like, we as a unit here, as the second years or, or the first years or whoever, like, all really do fuck with each other. Um, and so, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm definitely, definitely curious to see what happen you know what happens with the next fight because i'm wondering if this theme is going to be continued you know so maybe like again i, I guess what i was getting at with that i'd be hard pressed to think that most of the um third years uh to an extent aren't are under this same kind of like understanding right that like ugh, our like our life has been shit the professors to some extent and the principal or jujitsu sorcery as a whole has made our lives so much shit so we like have that sort of negative cynical outlook on life and it's going to be sort of up to the you know the first years to like remind them right of like you know you got uh UG mega meat like to, to sort of reinstill this idea of like no 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 you still like you're not <laughs> your time's not up you know what I mean like you still have the the power and, and the you know the the know-how to like make a change and do something positive uh for yourself and the world at large which uh I hope happens 
All right, folks, that is our discussion today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you're dropping a like on this video, subbing to the channel if you haven't already, commenting your thoughts down below. What did you think of our discussion, this episode, etc.? We're excited to read all those comments down below. This was a fantastic episode, so we're excited to talk about it. Today's question is, how many fingers does Sukuna have? Answer that, and your comment might just show up on next week's discussion. But until next time, we will catch you on the flip. Peace. Peace. Ninjas are samurais, blazing the cool knives. Find me in the leaf of the cloud, screaming out Bankai. We just some ghouls though, who like seeing parts fly.